Hi. Uh, I broke a string. Uh, to those that are familiar with my dulcimer playing, that's probably not a great bit of earth shaking news because I tend to break a lot of them. But uh, for some reason or other, strings get broke on dulcimers. And if you've not had one happen before, it can be a pretty uh, traumatic experience. What I want to do today is show you a little bit to, of how to change out strings. What I know about uh, you know different types of strings and how uh, how to best fit them, and I guess some general tips in case this ever should happen to you. Uh, generally, you're given a dulcimer to work on by a friend. It's missing some strings, and they look at you and say, "Please, you know, can you replace them?" Before going into a panic, you're going to find out through this video that it's actually pretty simple and somewhat routine. Routine after the second or third one. So we're going to get going and we're going to show you a little bit about uh, how it's how the pins and stuff are set up and you know how it's easy to make this thing work. All right, first thing we're going to do is we find out that the brake is usually at a joint or at, at you know usually at a marked bridge. Sometimes you'll find them where they'll be broke along the uh, dowel rim through here, either by vibration or accidents. As you see, uh, different um, manufacturers, different makers, have a different arrangement. Some, like the Rick Thumbs, have pins on both sides. Those are those are perfectly good. These ones have little pins that are uh, screwed into the, or nailed into the pin block, and then the loops are hooked down through here. Some other ones will have. Um, you'll start here with. You'll start here with one string. It'll go all the way to the other end. Loop around loop around one of these pins on the other side and then come back and tie into one, another one here. So this is essentially all one string. Uh, any, way it does, any way it works, um, they can be easily repaired. Some other things that you have to see is that on occasion you'll see the um, uh, you'll have wound strings that are over Dalrin. Sometimes that might cause a problem, especially if the, the strings are brand new and tuning. I've broken a number of them here before I finally figured out that I had to lift the string over top of the Dalrin in the treble bridge as I was trying to tune it. But it's one of those things that um, you know we get along with and we fix it up. As far as uh, fixing strings goes, you can get to the point where if a string breaks during a tune or during a, a jam session, you can actually have the thing replaced and back in tune by, time, by the time the next tune comes around. So it it's really is quite simple. We're going to go over it step by step. First thing, we uh, start looking around at uh, the uh, broken string. Now I cut this one for illustration purposes, but you'll notice on this particular dulcimer that the uh, string that's broke is on the top of the pin. That makes it taken off pretty easy. That never happens to me. Generally the one that breaks is the one on the bottom. And sometimes you'll find uh, where the strings are, are, you know, you just basically have to cut them and let them swing around and put them down, let them hang down here until you get at them later with some cutters. But this one, for instance, uh, like I said, I cut it so it happened to be the top string. So I can just basically pull that up and get rid of it. On this side, again, I had pulled this string off before, where you're just basically unwinding it and then just pulling it out. And that leaves this that leaves this pin ready to go. I'm gonna reach over and grab uh, grab my wrench here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take my uh, tuning wrench and I wanna unwind it three turns. So now it's set down here this way. I just kinda of keep a mental eye of what's going on and I unwind it three turns. One, two, three. Now if I look close, I see that I can kinda of line the hole up so that it's not too hard to get the string back into it. Now while we're talking about it, let's talk a little bit about the strings themselves. The uh, strings are not all the same size, not all the same thickness. And generally you'll have uh, thin, thinner strings up here, a medium sized string down here, maybe some heavier ones down here. It depends on the maker. And they're usually pretty good at uh, either providing charts or if you give them a call, they'll tell you what size string they're putting on these things. And often they'll be able to eat, uh, send you the strings you need if you're really in uh, short supply. Down here, sometimes you'll find makers that have wound strings, either two or in some cases just one thick one that goes across the Dalrin here. 
And so finding strings, you can find those generally at guitar shops. Stuff, some of the bigger ones like uh, Elderlies and Lansing will have uh, a good selection of strings. So you can uh, pick something up there. If you can't um, find it, you're generally going to have to go with a mail order or call the manufacturer. They'll have the strings. But the important thing on the strings that you're ordering for a hammered dulcimer is they have to be loop end. If you go into a music store and just ask for 20,000 strings or ask for a certain size string, they're going to give it to you or sell it to you easy enough, but it's going to have a ball end on it. It's going to actually have a little knob on the end of it, and that's that's for guitar use. If you're going to get something for the hammer dulcimer, you want banjo strings. That's If they have anything, they'll have banjo strings, and generally these are long enough, and they'll have the loop end at the bottom so they can be used as dulcimer strings. The uh, size is kind of important. It's good. You, you need to know what size it is through the, for the one that you broke. To replace it with a thinner one, it's not, they're not going to sound the same. So in this, for this dulcimer, generally 20 thousands is the size that's used for these. And I'm going to show you how to string it right now. While I'm not trying to do any advertising, uh, blatant advertising, uh, this is what I found that works out pretty good. These are banjo, tenor banjo, and mandolin, plain steel loop ends. They're called L20s. But if you look closer, that the diameter, you'll have to excuse the focus on this, the diameter is 0 .020 inches diameter, or 0 .5 uh, millimeters. The, uh, that's, that's basically the thickness of it. If you go in and you say you want 20 thousandths, and the clerk uh, halfway knows what he's doing, he'll reach in and pull out a 20 thousandths. But make sure that you specify that you want banjo, tenor banjo, or mandolin strings. That you want them plain steel and you want loop ends. All right. Yeah, first part of stringing this is going to be taking the loop end and unwinding it. Or taking all the string and unwinding it. And then threading it through the base bridge. Now this one I broke was off the treble bridge. Even in my case of heavy-handed um, playing, I don't don't well, I won't generally um, break the uh, strings for the uh, bass bridge, but in so in most cases and all cases I would guess that you're going to thread it through the bass bridge through the holes of the bass bridge, and let me move this down a little bit so you can see what's going on. There we go. You'll thread it through the hole of the bass bridge and then slide it through, and then and then when you get it through you're going to hook it onto the pin on the back side here so I'm going to be working it up like so I've got a damper here so I slide it underneath I take it and loop it on here Oops. let me get around here so it's not tangled up with any other strings try that again pull it through here we go make sure it's free following the track of the other one now the other thing I've done is I take some piece of tape since I don't have an assistant around right now I can take some tape and tape it down. I would probably suggest using masking tape as opposed to clear tape, but both of them do a fine job. An assistant works better. So generally tape that end down and uh, you're ready to throw, string the other side. Now what you'll do is you'll follow the path of the other string. You'll string it over top of the treble bridge and again I have dampers so I'm going to slide this underneath and follow the path that I have for the previous one here. Now what I've done is I've unwound this three times. And when I unwound it three times, I made sure that the hole was somewhat lined up to where I want to put it in. I go ahead and thread that in. You have to ignore all the weird noises this thing's going to give you. Thread it through. Again, check out the path from in, in relationship to the other one that they're running parallel. Now once I do that, this is kind of the important part. I go with a three finger measurement. I take my three fingers and I lay it out like so. Then what I do is I pinch the end of this and I push it back. So I use my three fingers for measurement because I unwound three cranks. Three fingers for measurement, pinch it here, push it back. And that's that's going to give me about three windings on it. Now I take my wrench, slide it in, and I turn it. Now as I do it, I press down on the string to make sure I get a sharp kink right at the end here. So that my I have a nice sharp kink, and this one I'll even move up a little bit, so I I'm not going to twist it around things, and I want to make sure that when I wind it, 
the winding is below that pin, below that piece of wire that's sticking out. Now, as I go ahead and wind it, I want to be careful that I'm following the path. And as I do it, I'm going to kind of get my fingernail in here and adjust it. I'm going to move it around, and I see that as I do it, I do it slow. Keep the winding up so that it's close to the pin, where the, where the wire goes into the pin. Bring it on around. And I'm going to do a little adjusting here. Sorry if I'm in the way of the camera. There we go. Bring it up just a little bit and just keep winding. And as I'm winding, I'm going to be very careful looking at the bridge to make sure that I maintain it parallel. Make sure that everything looks clean. Make sure that on the other end, that the piece, I'm on the other side, I would make, I would kind of push that down and make sure it's as far down on that pin as possible. But as I'm winding it down, you'll notice that things are starting to shape right up. Now, every once in a while, as I'm starting to wind it, I'll pluck the first string, the one string. That's the tone it gives. See, now I've already got that strung higher than the other one, which is good, actually. So what I'll do is I'll pluck this string. And you can tune it up and down. I tune it up. See, there's, there's, the, there's the original string. Here's the new string. And I'll let it set there for a second. Now what I'm doing is I'm stretching it out. I'm pre-stretching it so that I, it'll tune, it'll, and I only have to tune it one time. So once I give it about a minute or so, I'm going to go ahead, and while that's busy stretching itself out, I'll try to clean this up a little bit. Now I always, I don't keep a set with me while I'm playing, but once I get home, I can take a pair of wire snips, go up here nice and close, and snip it off. You want to get that pretty close because if it's hanging out, you're going to catch it on things. Clothes, fingers, whatever you happen to have around. Now as I go back to retuning this, I'm going to... See, now I have the two different tones. What I can do is get it close. Now here's the right side treble bridge tone, which is going to be an E, and the other one, the new one. And I can back it up. Now I want to get them close. The next one. So now this is pretty much in tune. Now it's not going to be that close until I get it to actually get a tuner on it. But what I end up doing is I've tuned them two of them close enough to where I can get at it with a with a tuning meter and take care of it from there. I guess while we're in the subject of strings, we ought to talk a little bit about string maintenance. Strings tend to uh, rust up if they sit around too much, and you know sometimes, depending on the humidity and weather conditions around where you live, they may rust more or less. Uh, mine get dark, and there's not much to be said about it other than the fact that I can use a green scratchy. I've taken one of my wife's green scratchies and cut it up. Uh, don't tell her, but I can lay it over the top of these and I can scratch them back and forth and I can shine these up pretty good. Uh, don't use Brillo pads or don't use steel wool. You'll end up uh, making a mess. But these green scratches seem to do a nice job of cleaning things up. I've got a little discoloration right in here and if I scratch on him a little bit more, I'll end up cleaning him up. But you can lay it out like that, give it a nice good scrubbing. Not bad to do. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll wax the, uh, I'll wax, I'll, I'll pledge it. I usually put pledge on a stick, uh, one of my cleaning sticks, run it up underneath here to really shine this up. But then it gets some wax on the strings, and I like to scratch that off. And so every once in a while I'll go in here with a scratcher and try to clean things up. I generally will do it just before I get to a concert, more for getting rid of some of the nerves, you know, the nervous energy. But you always want to go in, I always want to go in with a nice, clean, shiny dulcimer and then have somebody come up and say, why, what a beautiful dulcimer you have, and then turn around and walk away, and here I'm sitting with my hands out like, hey, wasn't the song good anyway? So I scratch them, clean them all up, make sure they're nice and shiny. Uh, that's pretty much for how to restring a dulcimer in three or four simple, easy ways. Uh, let's talk about strings. We've talked a little bit about strings, the uh, ones you can buy. 
Um, I was restringing a whole dulcimer at one point and didn't see much sense in buying a ton of these things, so I went ahead and bought um, coils. And you can get these from piano stores, or you can, I, I get mine from elderlies, and you buy it by the pound. You know, it, and it, all of this is just wire. Now, one of the smartest things I did was, um, before I lost the packaging to it, which had the sizes on it, I went and wrote the sizes down, which is very nice because you can lose track of them. Finding sizes, or, you know, when you start messing around with strings, how thick is this string? Well, you're not going to know unless you have a way of measuring. And I, one time I went to a, a hardware store and they had these micrometers on sale. Now, I grew up, my dad was a machinist, so I was shown how to use these. And these are on a scale here where you can move it in and out. As you move this out, you know, this gap gets bigger and smaller. You can measure it using this. If you do buy a micrometer and don't know how to use it, ask one of the uh, ask one of the salesmen, and they should be able to help you out. But basically, if I rotate this, this is five thousandths, point zero zero five. There, that's about the width. That's about the thickness of a human hair. There's ten thousandths, or we put zero point zero one zero. There's fifteen thousandths and there would be 20 thousandths. So that's gonna be about the thickness of the string. Now what I do is I hook my, I pay pinky in here, take my string, slide it in, and then I start closing the gap up. As I put the gap up, I'm gonna just, it's gonna to start to grip. Now this particular string is 18 thousandths because I have 20 and then I go back two notches, two, two of the bigger notches. So this one's about 18 thousandths. I would probably use that for a little higher, a uh, little higher string there. But these are the different size strings that we can use if you're restringing dulcimers, if you're getting it in bulk. If you decide to do a uh, bulk stringing, you've got a whole dulcimer to string, you want to make your own loops. Uh, these things can get expensive. The one nice part about buying these, though, is that the end is going to be very consistent, the, the loop end part of it.